Trust in Father God Almighty, he knows what he is doing, brethren. We all go through trials and hardships because we are in Christ Jesus. We shall suffer, but no, God our Father will use our sufferings for the good of all and for our good. Rejoice in God always, even in our sufferings, for all our sufferings we now suffer is conforming us to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans 8, 18, for I am reckoning that the sufferings of the current era do not deserve the glory about to be revealed for us. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing, in the celestial through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have been sealed by the Spirit of God for the day of deliverance from our bodies and humiliation. Once a believer is sealed, they are always sealed. We cannot lose our allotment in Christ Jesus. It is impossible. For in grace we are saved by God, not by our works. Our salvation is all, is all done by God through Christ Jesus, our elder brother and Lord. For Christ Jesus, our Lord, finished it all for us by dying for all our sins on the cross. We have been justified from sin, and none of our sins count against us. Romans 5, 3, 11. Yet not only so, but we may be glorifying also in the afflictions, having perceived that affliction is producing endurance, yet endurance testiness, and yet testiness expectation. Now expectation is not mortifying, seeing that the love of God has been poured out in our hearts, through the Holy Spirit, which is being given to us for Christ, while we are still affirmed, still in accord with the error for the sake of the irreverent, irreverent died. For hardly for the sake of a just man will anyone be dying, but for the sake of a good man, perhaps someone may even be daring to die, yet God is commanding this love of his to us, seeing that while we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes, much rather than being now justified in his blood, we shall be saved from the end from indignation through him, for if, being enemies, we were conciliated to God through the death of his son, much rather being conciliated, we shall be saved in his life. Yet not only so, but we are glorifying also in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now obtain the conciliation. Second Corinthians five seventeen through twenty one. So that that if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The permanent passed by. Lo, there has come new. Yet all is of God who conciliates us to Himself through Christ, and is giving us the dispensation of conciliation. How that God was in Christ, conciliating the world to Himself, not reckoning their offenses to them, and placing in the word of the conciliation for Christ. Then are we ambassadors as of God, and treating through us. We are beseeching for Christ's sake, be conciliated to God, for one not knowing sin, he makes to be a sin offering for our sakes, that we may be becoming God's righteousness in him. Romans 8, 1 through 11, nothing consequently is now is condemnation to those in Christ Jesus, not according to flesh are they walking, but according to spirit. For a spirit's law of life in Christ frees you from the law of sin and death. For what was impossible to the law in which it was affirmed through the flesh did God, sending his own Son in the likeness of sin's flesh, and concerning sin he condemned sin in the flesh, that the just requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us who are not walking in accord with the flesh, but in accord with the Spirit. For those who are in accord with the flesh are disposed to that which is of the flesh. Yet those who are in accord with the Spirit, that which is of the Spirit, for the dispensation, disposition, of the flesh is death, yet the disposition of spirit is life and peace. Because of the disposition of the flesh is enmity to God, for it is not subject to the law of God, for neither is it able. Now those who are in the flesh are not able to please God, yet you are not in the flesh but in spirit, but in the spirit. But in spirit, if so, be that God's spirit is making its home in you. Now, if anyone has Christ's spirit, this one is not his. Now, if Christ is in you, the body indeed is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, if the spirit of him who rouses Jesus from among the dead is making its home in you, he who rouses Christ Jesus from among the dead will also be vilifying your mortal bodies because of his spirit making its home in you. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now, making known to you the making known to you, brethren, the evangel which I bring to you, which also you accepted, and which also you stand, through which also you are saved. If you are retaining what I said, and bringing the evangel to you outside, and accept you believe vainly, for I give over to you among the first what also I accepted, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was tombed, and that he has been roused the third day according to the scriptures, as, you, as, a, as soon as you, as a believer, whom God called and ordained before the disruption of the world, to believe the evangel of Paul, by the power of God and the might of his spirit operating in you, you are permanently sealed by God for the day of deliverance by his Holy Spirit. Verses that show we cannot lose our allotment in Christ Jesus no matter what. 
Romans 8, 28 through 30. Now we are aware that God is working all together for the good of those who are loving God, who are called according to the purpose that whom he foreknew, he designates beforehand also to be conformed to the image of his son, for him to be the firstborn among many brethren. Now whom he designates beforehand, these he calls also. And whom he calls, these he justifies also. Now whom he justifies, these he glorifies also. Let me in 3, 20 through 21, for our realm is inherent in the heavens, out of which we are awaiting a Savior also, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transfigure the body of our humiliation to conform it to the body of his glory in accord with the operation which enables even to subject all to himself. Ephesians 1, 1 through 13, and whom you, on hearing the word of truth, the evangel of your salvation, and whom I'm believing you in whom I'm believing also, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4, 30, and do not be causing sorrow to the Holy Spirit of God by which you are sealed for the day of deliverance. Romans 4.17 According as it is written that a father of many nations have I appointed you, facing which he believes it of the God who is vilifying the dead and calling what is not as if it were already done. Numbers 23-19 through 19, El is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of him any that he should feel regret. Does he say it, then not do it, or speak, and then cannot carry it out? Hebrews 6.18, God cannot lie when he makes a promise, and he cannot lie when he makes an oath. These things encourage us who came to God for safety. Romans 3.3-4, 3 for what if some disbelieve? Will their unbelief nullify the faithfulness of God? May it not be coming to that. Now let God be true, yet every man a liar, even as, even as it is written, that so thou shalt should be justified in thy sayings, and shall be conquering when thou art being judged. Blessed be the Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blesses us with every spiritual blessing of us. Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blesses us with every spiritual blessing among the celestials in Christ, according as he chooses us in him before the disruption of the world, we to be holy and flawless in his sight, and love designating us beforehand. For the place of a son, for him through Christ Jesus, in accord with the delight of his will, for the Lord of the glory of his grace, which graces us in the beloved, in whom we have the deliverance through his blood, the forgiveness of offenses, in accord with the riches of his grace, which he lavishes on us in all wisdom and prudence, making known to us the secret of his will, in accord with this delight, which he purposed in him to have an administration of the complement of the heirs, to head up all in Christ, both that in the heavens and that on the earth, in him in whom our lot was cast, also being designated beforehand, according to the purpose of the one who is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will, that we should be for the lot of his glory, who are pre-expectant in the Christ, in whom you also, on hearing the word of truth, the evangel of your salvation, in whom on believing also, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is an earnest of the enjoyment of our allotment to the deliverance of that which has been procured for the Lord of his glory. Ephesians 2, 4 through 8. Yet God, being rich in his mercy, because of his vast love with which he loves us, we also being dead to the offenses and the lusts, vilifies us together in Christ, and grace are you saved, and rouses us together and seats us together among the celestials in Christ Jesus that in the oncoming eons he should be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus, for in grace through faith are you saved. And this is not out of you, it's God's approach present, not of works, at least any... Ephesians 2, 9-10, through 10, Not of works, at least anyone should be boasting, for his achievement are we, being created in Christ Jesus for good works, for being created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God makes ready before him, that we should be walking in them. Romans 8, 17, yet if children and enjoyers also of an allotment, enjoyers indeed of an allotment from God, yet enjoy, oh, enjoyers of Christ's allotment, if to be that we are suffering together, that we should be glorified together also. Love, grace, and peace. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful night. And God bless you all. Love you all. As you can see, we can't lose our allotment in Christ. It's impossible. All right, that is all.